What we're specifically going to talk about today are two books that I think you should look into if you want to become a neuropsychologist that are going to be really, really helpful for you as you go into that journey. What is up fam? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Phil Sarpon. This is Phil's Guide to PsyD. This channel is dedicated to all things psychology one us in graduate school. If it is your first time here, welcome. What I basically do on this channel is that I answer any questions that you guys may have about clinical psychology school, PsyD schools, PhD programs, and so forth. What we're specifically going to talk about today is neuropsychology and some resources that I'm gonna give you guys that I think are gonna be really, really helpful for you if you want to become a neuropsychologist. What we're specifically going to talk about today are two books that I think you should look into if you wanna become a neuropsychologist that are gonna be really, really helpful for you as you go into that journey. Now I am going to give you guys a warning. These two books are very educational. They're very packed with a lot of information. They're not exactly the hardest read or the easiest read. I would say they're somewhere in between. There's a lot of definitions. There's a lot of terminology. There's a lot of learning involved in regards to these books. And so these two books are specific for some serious people who are really invested in wanting to become a neuropsychologist. I think these are two books that you will probably be able to use for the rest of your career. So these two books are not just books that you're going to read and then never look at. I think these are two books that have a lot of really good clinical information that are really helpful, that are really factual. They have a lot of citations and references and research behind all of the different things that they talk about. And I think not only will you use this book throughout graduate school, but also in your internship, in your postdoc, and in your path to becoming a board certified neuropsychologist. In fact, I was able to get these two book recommendations from a neuropsychologist who pledges that they use these books religiously in helping them with their board certifications. The first book, the title is The Rehabilitation of Neuropsychological Disorders. This is a practical guide for rehabilitation. Now, the thing about neuropsychology is that neuropsychology is based on understanding neurological pathways, diseases, pathology that goes on in the brain that impacts people's behavior, mood, emotions, different neurotransmitters are always usually on play. There's a lot of different brain imaging that you can use in order to figure out and diagnose these disorders. Neuropsychologists are working often with physicians and neurologists to see how they can diagnose someone and how they can help somebody. But of course, a neuropsychologist is specifically focused on the testing of diagnosing this disorder. So if you can think of the physician as someone who's treating the disease from a medication perspective. You can think of the neuropsychologist as someone who is doing the actual testing to give information and give light of what that diagnosis is and what could be helpful for that client. And so in order to do that, you have to understand all the different neuropsychology disorders that are available or that we have been able to find up to this point. And so this book gives a really good thorough overview of each and every single neuropsychology disorder as well as the rehabilitation plan of actually helping someone with that diagnosis. And so for example, if someone has ADHD or dementia, this book will talk specifically about what those conditions are, what neuropsychologists can do in terms of the testing and assessment, and then also the rehabilitation or the recovery plan for that patient in mediating that type of disorder or that type of disease. So that is a little bit of some of the information of what this book gives you. It gives you the meat, the bones of what neuropsychology is, what these disorders look like, how they're manifested, and what we know about them in terms of the research that we've done so far. Now, along with understanding disorders, we have to understand assessment, and that's what this next book is for. This next book is called A Clinical Neuropsychology. It is a pocket handbook for assessment. This is about all things assessment. So the first book was mainly about disorders, and the rehabilitation process of those disorders if someone's diagnosed with something. This book is specifically about testing, assessment, neuropsychology evaluations, and so different things that neuropsychologists can do to evaluate and assess for executive functioning, maybe some speech, maybe some verbal fluency, 
maybe some mood, emotion related things, personality related things, whatever it is, whatever testing or assessment is involved in actually making the diagnosis, then that is what this book specifically focuses on. So now at least you guys have two resources, one that goes over the disorders of neuropsychology and then another one that goes over what to do, what the assessment, what the testing will look like. I think once you understand the pathology, the neurologic pathways that can happen in the brain, and then you also understand some of the testing that can happen that neuropsychologists will use in order to basically treat someone with a certain condition, then I think you will have a little bit of the fuller picture of what exactly neuropsychologists do and how they can help their patients and how they can also work with other mental health professionals and medical professionals in the treatment plan of a patient. So hopefully all of that makes sense. If you guys have any questions about that, of course, you can put that in the comment section below. If you have not already subscribed to this channel, please subscribe to this channel. That way you can get all these notifications about all the videos that I do about clinical psychology. And if you have not already, please like this video as well. With that, I will see you guys in the next video.